here, Jean True Love from True Love Quilts for You. I'm coming to you from a hot and steamy Pennsylvania. Oh my word. It was about 97 degrees yesterday and high humidity. And <laughs> of all the days or the weeks, um, what we're doing is we are, I'm doing a tutorial, but uh, I'll show you my tutorial in a minute. I just feel like chatting and you, you guys don't mind me chatting. The ones who mind me chatting, you can go away. Um, but what we've done is we have a barn out back um, and we are needing more storage. Uh, since we've moved, we lost a several sheds and we lost a large trailer. Um, there's no garage here. So we are, we have a barn out back um, and it had a lean to roof over the side of it um, and but because of township restrictions we can't enclose that lean-to although the roof is good um, permanently we can't put a concrete pad down or anything like that so we're making it as as much as temporarily permanent as we can um, we were hauling stone and I was tamping down stone because um, it's just going to have a stone floor we're going to put shelves in it and everything we had some old windows we've stuck in the side um, but we can get away with it because it's not permanent but boy we've been doing that <laughs> my husband has actually dear Maxwell he dug a 60 foot a maybe 70 foot out to the barn trench um, to run electricity out to it so we have lights out there um, he dug a trench through I was I'm like putting the sod down and like oh digging this trench and then backfilling it so we've been really really working hard in that in that weather um, but um, they work so hard to get it done. Uh, my husband, as you know, he's a worker. Um, if you've been watching me, you know that my husband doesn't sit down. He loves to work. He's always going. Um, he's older and yet he always says, if I sit down, I'm going to rust. Boy, he can move. He's amazing. He's an amazing worker. He loves to do projects. And this, was, this is a fairly decent sized project. Um, um, Maxwell, I just wanted to tell you also that Maxwell my maybe my next video will be showing you Maxwell's new computer if you've been following you know that Maxwell worked very hard to get all of his components components he builds computers and he was uh, he got all of his components together and our daughter and our son-in-law our daughter Malia and our son-in-law Justin came last night to help him put his computer together he can do it but this one wow it's all the bells and whistles he's just so thrilled so Justin came, they came with masks. Oh, Elliot came yesterday to help with the barn. Um, we're gradually seeing people, <laughs> whatever people are. And then last night, later last night, a friends of ours came with an icy cold watermelon. It was so nice on that hot, hot day. But today, uh, Maxwell and Ian went off to work. Um, they're doing something. Um, but I'm sitting here in the air conditioning before I get to my tutorial, which is it's this it's a little if you want to hang around I'll, I'll tell you when you can skip ahead. Um, it's a little jewelry bag. It's a little cosmetic jewelry bag But I was over the years when I sit down We're not real big television people, but over the years. I've I've loved doing embroidery This is one of my newest. I just just dipping my toe into a little embroidery kit. This is with floss a sweet little thing. I don't know what I'll do with it. But um, over the years, I would take a picture of the, of the things that I've done. I've done every type of needlepoint. I've done every needlework. I've done needlepoint and petty point and cruel and embroidery and long stitch and macrame and candle wicking and you name it. I have, I have done it. And I have quite a few framed pieces. I'll take some pictures of it if you're interested. That was literally 45, 50 years ago that I was doing um, embroideries. When my babies were little, um, I didn't sew as much, but I would sit when they were taking a nap. I always, I always just sat and I always had some handiwork. And I think if you guys remember in the 1970s, late 70s and 80s, the kits, the dimensions kits. Um, this, is a, this is one, a sweet one I'm going to do. Look at all that wool. That, this, is, this is cruel work. This is making it with um, onto the um, canvas or onto the um, cloth, printed cloth. With, with yarn, with yarn. This is a sweet one, a Victorian street. Oh, a project for experienced stitchers. I'm not, I don't know if I'm not, I'm not an experienced stitcher, but I, I do good. But this is, this is life as we would like to know it, right? Horse-drawn carriages and uh, flower carts 
and little little um, towns, town square with a town clock, the shoemaker, life as we would like to have it. You know, maybe maybe. Well, we know one day it's going to be it's going to be wonderful. We we look forward to the future. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, what's we want to get back to normal? But I'm we were talking about like, well, what's normal? Normal normal is like we live in a wicked, horrible world. I don't want to I don't want to go back to the evil and the riots and the horribleness. So some semblance of order. We just always look ahead. We look ahead with positivity. Um, we have a bright future ahead of us. And um, it's exciting. It's exciting looking ahead um, to idyllic times. So my tutorial is this little jewelry holder here. I made three. I made three sizes, and I was experimenting. And as you can see, this little holder works. This is my larger one. This is the tutorial I'm doing it on. This fabric. It has a um, a pad at the bottom of it, and it has eight little pockets and you could just not not just for jewelry but like a cosmetic bag you could put your lipsticks and your your brushes and all of things because if you go if you go anywhere are you guys going anywhere <laughs> like into a, a hotel dresser or something you could keep your belongings safe there that's all and i i have um little drawstrings i've had this cording for a long time i've been using my just some cording now i've been looking at different ways to make these and a lot of the a lot of the um, method is to make buttonholes. I'm thinking, I can't be bothered. I know my machines do it. I have to get out my other machine. Well, my machine set up. I can't be bothered making a buttonhole. And then I'm thinking, well, then they have this, um, like a, a rivet thing with a hole in it that you punch. And I think I have that somewhere in my, in my sewing room. I know I have that hardware. I thought, I can't be bothered. But you need, a, you need two holes for the drawstring on either side to come out. So I just show you how I just made a finished like a slit. <laughs> it's real simple. I didn't have a button, but it's perfect. It's all finished. It's fine. Um, and I, again, I, uh, so so many um, tutorials. You know me. I don't like to be touting like you know buy this ruler, buy that gadget, buy this gizmo. You know links below. Um, I don't do that. I have about four or five different companies. Let's see, Martelli, my Juki, my brother, my fist cars. Uh, you know my fist cars and what my singer scissors. What else? I just. Oh, Elmer's glue stick, right? You know, things like that. I'm not all for gadgets and gizmos. However, I have a, I have a very high-tech way to make this. You need a dinner plate. <laughs> a 10-inch dinner plate. I, Because I'm thinking, I need a circle. How do I do a circle? I'm trying to do a circle. I'm thinking, I have a compass. Not a compass, a protractor somewhere. I'm thinking, oh my word, what the heck? So I just got a dinner plate out and I made it a little bigger. The beauty is you can make these any size. You just, again, the tutorial will show you. You just need to make the circles a bit larger. So I made this one. This is the one I'm doing a tutorial on. I made that sort of my larger one. This is sort of a medium size. And this again, this has four, yeah, one, two, three, four different fabrics. Again, with the lovely little pockets inside. This is a little bit smaller. The drawstring then makes the ruffle on the top. This was my medium. And it turns out, as I said, it has a little padded bottom there. This one was my first one, which was very small. And it was a little bit crooked because I wasn't quite sure how to make it. It turned out very small. But again, even if you make them small, um, they end up like that, you know, for decent sized jewelry. Now I always wear, I put my jewelry on, right? I look like I'm going somewhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going over to that other side of my room. <laughs> I wear large jewelry. I like my, I have a lot of chunky, cheap stuff. You know, um, uh, I like cheap and gaudy stick. I'm not, not that I'm a cheap and oh, gaudy person. I, I am a bit. I have good jewelry. I have some good gold. I have gold chains and I have some gold, I think. I don't know where they are. <laughs> They're real dainty, but I'm not dainty. And I, I, I think as I get bigger, <laughs> I, I, my hair gets bigger and my jewelry gets bigger. <laughs> but this stuff, this, this holds. I, I won't bore you, but I'm telling you, this, this holds, look at that. It holds quite a lot of jewelry. You know, your jewelry can go down there. And then when you, when, then when you, do the drawstring it's all enclosed it's not going anywhere so anyway that is my tutorial um again i from um oh i, I i'm just looking over here i will be doing a 
tutorial, I've said it before, on my hexagon uh, table runner and my table topper. Oh, having said that, you do need to buy something, which is fine. I, I have um, two different, I have uh, several different size hexagon rulers, templates that you need, obviously, to make a hexagon thing. Um, and I got mine from, I forget where I got one, I got them, several from Martelli and another company. But I will be showing you that. That's a really cool quilt as you go project. That's to come. Um, I'm going to do a video of Maxwell with his computer. He was so thrilled. Ah, that dear boy. He's such a good, good worker. I tell you, he's been helping Ian. As I was saying, um, our son Elliot came and helped. Our other boys are on vacation. Um, they did go down. They have a shore house. They went down to the shore. Um, but Elliot came. Justin came to help. Um, people are gradually coming into our life. <laughs> gradually. Um, it's, been, it's, been a real, it's been a real trial. But as I said, we just look to the future. A happy future. A positive future. I'll continue doing my little, my little needlework here. It's quite nice. Um, but I have a couple projects on the go. Little projects that I will be... Um, I'll be sharing with you if you're interested and the ones who are interested are interested and I really thank you for allowing me to waffle on and and giving me the time of day I felt like talking I'm here alone I'm all alone <laughs> it's actually it's quite nice it's quite nice I'm not going outside again it is again a scorcher a scorcher it really is our other house had a swimming pool I I never swam though I'm like you get wet I don't, I wasn't into that. Um, well, of course you get wet, but you know what I mean. Like, I didn't want to get wet. I was busy doing laundry. Um, but we've always had a swimming pool. This house doesn't have a swimming pool. But our kids, I was thinking about it. Two of them have above ground pools and two of them have in ground pools. So if we want to go swimming, we can go to their houses. We've been, been there, done that. By July 31st or 30th, our home will be done. Our old house will be done. Um, the new owners are looking forward to it. We are keeping the pool blue for them. Um, we're having a pool guy go in to, 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 to keep that going for them. Um, it's a family who are buying our new, our old house, but we're happy here. Um, it's been a, it's been a, somebody said, oh, why don't you get on with it? Like, stop, enough with the downsizing and moving. And I thought, well, that's not very nice. I'm like, it's a, it was a huge, massive transition for my husband and I. Massive, huge. Living somewhere almost three decades, raising our ten children, and then people are like, oh, get over yourselves. I'm like, oh, stop, stop. We are gradually getting over ourselves, um, and we're loving living here. Oh, there's deer. I mean, they're coming closer and closer and closer. It's really cool. And we, we're not gardeners or anything, because I know a lot of people don't like the deer eating all their vegetables and flowers. We're, we don't have that. Um, it was nice because our son, he had a land, there's five acres here, he had his landscaper come the other day and they did all the mulch for us. It looks so pretty because we're not gardeners and I'm like, oh, we, you know, but, you know, he's, he had his landscaper come and it looks so nice outside. So we, we weren't sitting outside because it's too hot, but I was watching the deer. Um, we were actually, we were out there working and all of a sudden Maxwell went, oh, hello there. He's looking into the woods. There's a deer right, right on our grass. It was so nice. And, and we weren't, oh, I wasn't like, oh, stop. It was like we were talking. I'm like, oh, hey, how you doing? And it sort of walked around. I think they're realizing we're, we're friends. We're not the enemy. Um, so it's so lovely. It really, really is. We have lots of wildlife. I'm thoroughly enjoying living here. It's, um, it's been wonderful. Um, but again, the chapter is going to close for our old house, which is fine. Um, we're making new memories here and looking to forward to a bright future. So thank you, everybody. Keep safe. Keep sane. And above all, be kind. People need kindness nowadays. And um, anyway, so here we go. Tutorial to follow. My little, little jewelry holder. Hope you enjoy it, folks. Thanks. See ya.
you're going to be needing, um, I've pulled two fat quarters, two lovely fat quarters, and I have from another, another uh, pack, another um, fabric line, I pulled two 10 inch squares. Just, I, I can just about get my, my uh, circle out of a 10 inch square. Um, I've used a plate, and this is, this is a, just a regular size dinner plate, however big this is. Um, this is our dinner plate. This is a 10 inch dinner plate. Okay, I've used my dinner plate. And then what you're going to need is you're going to be needing, uh, let me measure this, you're going to be needing a three inch circle of some sort. Um, or three and a half inches, doesn't really matter. I'm using the uh, top to a, a mason jar, the lid to a mason jar. That's where we're just going to make our little pattern there. You're going to be needing a hunk or a little scrap of either batting or a fusible fleece. That's a fusible. I like the fusible to keep it in place, just a square. And then also you're going to be needing um, a, just a, just a, I'll show you, a small amount, half, not even half a yard, just a few pieces of um, a lightweight. Um, I'm using a um, non-woven fusible featherweight interfacing. Very, very, very thin with a knobbly side, very see-through. It just gives the outside just a little, little bit of body. I'd gotten this from Martelli. Um, it's a piece, I guess it's about a yard. Just need a, a, a few pieces of that, but I'll show you. So now what we're going to be, oh, and also you're gonna be needing some cording for our drawstrings. Um, I have had this, uh, this spool of a million yards of this cording um, that I'm gonna be using. Uh, a couple yards, two, 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 two and a half yards or something like that, but I'll show you at the end again. Um, so we'll just put this to, just put this to the side what we're going to be doing with our outside piece, our outside fat quarter, the, the, the pretty side that's going to show, okay, what you're wanting to do, look at the size of that fat quarter. This is from, these fat quarters are from um, Connecting Threads. Oh my word, their, their material is just glorious. This is called English Tea from Connecting Threads. Look at the size of that fat quarter. They're so generous and their fabric is like butter. I love Connecting Threads. So on the, what we're going to do is, I mean, look at that size, that fat quarter. What we're going to do though, is we're going to take our plate, our 10 inch plate, and we're going to be putting it, we're going to be marking our plate with a ruler. Um, put it about like that. We're going to be marking it with a, oh, you're going to be needing a marker that you will be needing a marker for this project. Um, this is a blue pencil, um, but if you wanted to get a, wash out or we will be marking our fabric it's important so what i'm going to do is placing my my plate here i'm going to take my ruler okay i should have a smaller ruler <laughs> i should have a smaller ruler. um anyway and i'm going to be marking it uh two and a half inches no i'm going to be marking it two inches let me just see mm, yeah two inches just at intervals keeping my plate not shifting my plate I'm just going to go around my, my plate and mark it two inches away from my plate, okay? Just at intervals. And then I'm obviously going to be joining up these, um, don't shift my plate, I'm going to be joining up the markings. And what we're doing here is because I haven't, because um, I don't have a pattern, I'm, I'm just going to be marking it. I'm going to mark it and then I'll be right back. I just had to get a smaller ruler um, to mark my, I had to just get a smaller ruler. So what I've done is, you probably can't see it, but I can see the blue lines, I can see my blue marking lines, and I'm just going to go and I'm going to, I'm going to draw <laughs> from line to line, it's pretty accurate, I must say, it's pretty accurate, because I don't know math and how to make a perfect circle, so I figure my plate's pretty good. So I'm just going to follow my blue lines that I've made, I'm just going to, um, connect them, connect the dots. Okay, this is just with one outside piece of fabric, okay? This is just one, the one, our one outside bit of fabric. Okay, let me just go over here, see if I can find there, there's my dot, my blue. This is my way of, of making a circle. It works, it's fine. There's my blue marker and there it is. Okay, now I'm going to take either a pair of scissors or a rotary cutter and I'm going to cut I'm going to cut on that line I'm going to cut on that line 
as best I can. And it, again, this won't be perfect because it's not a perfect pattern, but it gets roughed up anyway, and it's, pre it's almost pretty darn perfect. So here's our outside piece, but I'll show you what we do with it. Just cutting it on that blue line. Okay. Now, there's our outside circle. Now what you're going to do, I'm going to go over to my ironing board and I'm going to do this. And oh look at that, pretty, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Fold it in half. Fold it in half. And I'm just going to go iron that piece. I'm going to iron this right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up on the fold line. And then with my straight edge, wherever it is, I'm going to cut that because it's exactly half. I'm going to cut that exactly in half. So here's my fold line right there. I can see it. I'm just going to line my ruler right up, right butt up against it. I've ironed it really well. Smooth that away. I'm just going to cut this piece in half. So I have two pieces like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, I'm going to take my um, fusible interfacing. Okay, my fusible interfacing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is, it has a, this is fusible, so it has a soft silky side, and then it has the nubbly side where the glue is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to face, I'm going to um, interface these two pieces of fabric here. Okay, I'm going to, I won't bore you with that. I'm just going to put this, I'm just going to cut, straighten it all up, and then I'm just going to cut around there. A little bit big, but you get the idea. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut the shape. I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna interface both of these pieces with the fusible side down. As you can see, it's a very very feather feather weight um, interfacing. It just gives it a little bit of body. So I'm gonna do that on both of my pieces. So I have I have fused both of my halves of my circle together and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the pretty sides together the right sides of my fabrics together okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to stitch this seam however what I'm got what what you want to do where is my pin what you want to do on this seam is you're going to you're going to go down about half an inch and stitch back and forth and then you're going to skip about an inch Okay, you're going on this seam on both sides. You're going to go. You're going to start at the end here, and you're going to stitch down an inch, and back stitch, back stitch, and then you're going to keep, leave an opening, and then another quarter quarter inch seam right down to this point here, back stitch, back stitch, and then back up to the end about half an inch from that end all the way up to that end there. So you'll have an opening here in this seam. So I'm going to go do that now. So I've gone and I've stitched this center seam. I've gone down not quite, not quite an inch actually. I said half an inch. Not, yeah, I've gone down um, not quite an inch from the top. So you want to make a note of that. And then leave about an inch and then stitch your seam on both sides. Yeah, it's, it's not quite an inch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and I'm going to uh, um, press this seam open there. So I pressed my seam open and as you see we we lose the perfect circle. We lose the to the perfect circle but I find when I, the finished product I don't know how to make this perfect circle with the seam so because I don't have a pattern but I find the finished product doesn't it doesn't affect it at all because it's all roughed up anyway so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our second the inside lining of our outside bit okay not the not our little pretty pockets but we're going to take the inside lining and then we're going to take our outside as a pattern piece as it were and we're going to I'm going to I'm just going to cut again I'm just going to cut you can either mark it and cut it or I'm, I'm just going to cut around it with my rotary cutter um, making this making this um, actually what I'm going to do yes what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that onto the right side the pretty side of the fabric yeah, that's what I'm going to do. There's the pretty side of the fabric because we're, we're going to end up just stitching this together. 
the pretty side to the pretty side. So if we cut it, it's going to be perfect. So I'm just going to cut that circle out. So I have cut out my circle of my, the inside of my outside of, bit of the lining. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to sew these together on the outside, all the way around, about quarter of an inch, okay? You'll want to pin this, but first of all, what we want to do is we want to find, we want to, that's pretty good. Yeah, you see, I didn't, it's not exact, but that's okay, because it's going to be taken up in the seam anyway. So what we're going to do is I'm going to fold that in half as best I can, and fold it in half like that, again, in quarters, and I'm just going to take off a little, just take off the, the a little corner there, okay? That gives us a little hole in the back of this piece of fabric here. Put my, uh, my, put my front on the, or put this piece here, and then I'm going to go pin this, and then I'm going to sew it all the way around the outside edge. The hole in the middle on the back will allow us to turn it. I'll make that a little, little bit bigger, but I'll show you that when I get to it. So right now, I'm going to go over, there is a trick, there is a trick um, because this is on the, the whole thing is on the bias, this whole bit here, this whole circular thing here, um, you want to pin it well or clip it. Um, and, and then you're going to, you want to hold your, you sort of want to hold it behind the needle because it will have, if you just sew it, it will have the tendency to sort of pucker up just a little bit, even if your stitch tension is perfect. Um, it's because it's on the on the bias. It's going to stretch slightly. So I just find when I stitch it, I just sort of hold it in the back to hold those stitches down and back behind and nice and flat. So I'm just going to go and I'm just going to stitch that all the way around about quarter of an inch. So as you can see, I have stitched around the whole edge of my of my little package here. Now with a pair of sharp scissors, where are my sharp scissors? Here we go. Um, what I'm going to do with, in this little hole, I'm just going to extend that just slightly, about an inch on either side. An inch, yeah, about, a, about an inch or an inch and a half on either side, just to make an opening. Now, a lot of people um, would clip a curved corner, a, cu a curved edge, and the whole thing is curved, as you see. I've done, I've made three of these, and I found that um, after I turn it inside out, I don't need to clip it. I've just, my, my, at my, um, curved seam goes together beautifully to make a perfect circle. By all means, if you want to clip it, you can. Now again, my trick to turning anything inside out is you push it instead of pulling it. I push the majority of my fabric through the hole. I'm not pulling it all the while, straining it. So most of it's pushed, there's no strain on the opening, and then I can, then I can gently turn it. That's my, that's my thing. I, I push. <laughs> I push. I push it through. I push it out. I pushed out a bunch of kids. Instead of pulling them, you don't pull kids out. You push them, right? So here I am. So here's my circle. Now, my again, another trick. I haven't clipped any corners, but another trick. We want to we wanna make sure it's um, all lovely and flat. I go over to my ironing board and sort of dampen my fingers here, and I just, I sort of pinch and roll. I pinch and roll those seams right up to the right up to the edge there. You can really, I mean, I, I mean, it's not rocket science. You guys know how to, you know, make a lovely seam, but so you don't get any sort of folds underneath. I just make sure I go right around, and because I haven't clipped any corners, but look, my circle or my almost circle <laughs> is is almost is almost perfect. There's our little opening, and you'll see why we did the opening. So I'm just going to continue pinching this, rolling it so that the, the seam, so you don't see when you press it, when you iron it, I should say, or press it, you don't see, you don't see the lining on the outside here. You don't see the outside on the lining here. So I'm just going to continue pressing this. I'll go over to my ironing board and, and make this almost pretty circle. <laughs> Here's my finished circle, my outside of my bag, and as you can see, on the outside you don't see any lining, and on the inside you don't see any of the outside bit, okay? And it's almost a circle. And I wanted, I just wanted to show you that from my center seam, I have uh, six and a half inches from that center seam to my edge here, and then from that, from that center seam, I'm slightly off there. 
and so this is just slightly about a quarter of an inch off but this is almost in the middle I don't know how to get that perfectly in the middle but again as I said it doesn't affect that quarter of an inch off doesn't affect the wear or the look of my bag so I'm very pleased with that I have this opening here now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around here and top stitch I'm not going to do like quarter of an inch I'm going to do a little bit less than a quarter of an inch right along around the edge of this piece So here is my finished circle all top stitched around. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking our, uh, our, um, our little uh, lid, my, my mark, uh, my, um, whatever this is, my, my three inch, uh, this is a three, three inch or three and a quarter inch uh, lid mason's jar. And on the, on the, on the uh, front of the fusible, I have a fusible fleece. I'm just gonna cut out a circle. Just going to cut out a circle here. I just marked it with a sharpie. It's okay. It's not going to be seen. Now, after I made this, I was thinking, you, if you wanted to make this a bit of a solider, a more a solider, a more solid bottom, you could maybe even use like um, I don't know, like a a, a margarine lid, like a piece of plastic or something, I, I something like that. If you wanted to do that to make it more solid, actually that might that might work and cut it cut it this size and maybe like put it underneath this fusible fleece here to make the bottom even more solid. You can make that a little bit bigger if you wanted, but this is how big I made mine. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm, this, this is exactly the middle of my, this, this opening here is the exact middle. So I'm just going to sort of press this, finger press that, and then just find that middle and then just with a fusible knobbly side, glue side down, I'm going to go over and I'm going to press that. I'm going to iron that on. So I've ironed my fusible fleece onto there and I've just measured this and it's pretty much all the way around except a bit more here because it's a little bit out there. But it doesn't, again, it doesn't matter. It's pretty much about five inches. If I've, I've centered it pretty good. It's pretty much about five inches away from, from the hole, from the edge. So that's nice and centered. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two fat quarters. These have come, these come off of the manufacturer with the pinked edges and it just about makes it, make, makes it. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the right sides, the pretty sides together. Just scratch that together. They're from the same manufacturer. I'm going to take my plate and it just, and look at that, it just about m makes it, right? Just, just about makes it. And with my marker, I'm just going to mark my, I'm just going to mark this, um, my fat court, my, my, uh, my uh, 10 inch square here. I'm just going to mark that there. Yeah, it's come, it comes slightly off there. I lose, I just lose a hair, but that's fine. There we go. Now, because I'm just using a 10 inch square and it's within, with an inch of its life there, I'm just going to go over to my machine and I'm going to, because I've lost that little bit of, of, uh, of um, seam allowance right there, I'm going to just make this, I have to make it just slightly smaller just slightly, slightly smaller than my marked line. If you have a, if you have a 10 inch, if, if you have more of a, if you're using two fat quarters, you can do it exactly like this. And then you have your seam allowance. Cause I've lost a little bit of seam allowance. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just stitch slightly inside that line, this right there to keep my seam allowance, just slightly inside of it. It's just going to be a hair smaller, um, but I'm going to do it. I'm not going to cut this out yet. I'll, I'll, I'll cut it out after I finished stitching these, the two right sides together. So I have sewn these together and I completely, I completely omitted a, um, a step that, that uh, it's okay. We can make the hole in it um, now. Um, just have to be, uh, what we're going to do exactly like we did with the, the, the first one there. So what I did, I, I forgot to do this. On either, whichever, whichever side you want to be facing um, down, which is the inside lining, um, I think I want, I want this to be facing up. I want to see my darker side. I'm just going to cut my hole. I'm just going to pull these two pieces apart. And right in the middle there, making sure, I'm just going to make my little, I'm going to make my little notch. 
just make my little notch so I can get my scissors in there to turn it. Now, as you can see, I have, or maybe you can't see, but I can, I have, I have stitched, I have sewn my quarter inch seam and around there, and I'm just cutting off, I'm just trimming this off about a quarter inch away from that seam. As you can see, using a 10 inch square really just, it really did, um, uh, cut it close, but that's okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in here and do exactly like we did with the top one. And I'm going to, I'm going to go over and press this now. I'm, I, if you want to clip your corners, by all means you can, but I'm going to turn this inside out and press that really well. So I've turned my circle, almost circle, it's pretty good, um, to, the, uh, to the right side. And I, again, you can't, see, you can't see the outside fabric on the lining and you can't see the lining fabric on the outside. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to do it again exactly as I did on my, my front piece, my back piece. I'm going to go over and I'm going to top stitch around this piece. So now we have our, our uh, outside bit and our inside pocket bit. Now what we want to do is with the slit side that we had put for our lining down, um, and I'm sort of putting my, putting that seam sort of sideways. I don't know if that really matters, but I'm doing that. So there's my fabric there. And then I'm just going to put this like that. We have to find the center of our, our circle. And since it's not a perfect circle, it's fine. Um, but what I've done is I've, I've taken my lid that I did the size of my uh, fusible fleece. And I can sort of eyeball and then just figure, just pull this up. And if I see that fleece, I'm just going to, I'm just going to just know that that is exactly where my fleece is. Now what I have done is I've taken a bit of card and I had taken a, um, I've taken this lid and I've made a bit of card and every, every, um, with a straight edge, where's my, with my little ruler here, with a straight edge, I've, I've marked about every inch or so around here one two three four five six seven eight marks right around okay so that when i take a straight edge onto this piece of fat onto this pattern i um these are all the same distance away so now what i'm going to do again i'm going to find my with my pattern piece since it's cardboard i'm going to find my perfect circle making sure my batting isn't showing and then that's perfectly centered and then with my with a long straight edge holding that there um, I'm gonna where's the seam I'm going to try I'm, try, I'm I probably won't hit the seam but I'm gonna to try to get this line as straight as I can to the seam there probably won't I won't hit it but it's okay because the stitching we're gonna stitch this and you'll see will be showing on the outside but you won't really see that when it's all rucked, rucked in together. So now, with my marker, you will need a marker. I'm, that's positioned carefully right there. My fabric's all nice. I'm going to make a line right out from that circle. First of all, though, I'm going to make a circle around this circle here. We are going to be stitching. I'm holding this very tightly. And I'm gonna I'm gonna make a the, the, I'm gonna mark these spokes all the way out from this circle here. So that one, and then there. I'm gonna just continue matching up my my lines, going right out. And again, we're going to be stitching on these lines, and that's what's going to form our pockets. these spokes. So that is what we end up with. So I'm at my machine and I've pinned my marked pocket piece to my uh, backing. And what I'm going to do is, um, so I don't get a little bird's nest on the uh, outside of my fabric I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread and I'm just going to I turn the turn the hand wheel and that that thread is now up um, just like you would start a quilting stitch 
and then I'll put my uh, my presser foot my needle down now the trick to going in a circle obviously if you haven't done this um, is just to keep moving your fabric you just have to keep moving your fabric the whole time the whole time you have to just shift it around now I'm, be, I'm going around that piece of batting just go slowly get rid of that and of course the holes that I had made are all hidden you can see my marked my, I can see my marked blue line now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop there where I began needle down press the foot up now um, I'm going to go on the marked line I'm going to go to the very end and I'm going to back stitch several times because on that pocket that is where there's going to be you know you're going to be going in and out now what I'm going to do is clip that off neatly there what I'm going to do is now I'm going to just do one at a time again I have seven more spokes I'm going to put my needle down turn my hand wheel bring my bring my bobbin thread up to the top and pull it underneath that way the back side of this is going to be nice and tidy just starting right at that, I'm going to backstitch, starting right at the circle and on all of these seven spokes, or eight spokes, just to the edge and backstitch several times and then off. And there is our circle, there's my circle and here are my spokes. I'm going to finish that up now. So now that I have stitched all of my spokes down, as you can see, there's my circle nicely centered on my seam there, and all of my spokes coming out. What I want you to do, whoops, yeah, there you go, is um, starting wherever on a spoke, wherever, you're going to be doing the exact same thing about, just, not about, about quarter inch away from that outside spoke. Right, at, You don't want to catch these pockets, that's what I'm saying. So I'm going to put my, ne my ne needle down, pull up my bobbin thread, just so I don't again have that bird's nest. And I'm going to just put my needle down. And quarter inch or a little bit closer, you're just wanting to stitch right around, keeping everything nice and flat. Stitch right around that, that um, pocket edge. Obviously, you're not catching the pocket. Just stitch right around there. My machine's a bit noisy. I wonder why. I gotta oil it. You know, the pockets have a tendency because they're not stitched down to, to, to push the pocket in, but you don't want to do that. Just stitch right around here, like that. Oops, yeah, like that. Holding the pocket. Right around. Trim this, trim these off. And come to the end there, and just a little bit of a back stitch. Okay, we're we're almost done. So there we go. There's our circle. If you can see that, there's our circle right there. Now that's the outside, but when it's all scrunched up, you don't even really see the stitching. But if you did, it's pretty anyway. Now what you're going to do is you're going to start. Or you're going to find the seam. The seam that you've stitched and we've made this opening remember we had an opening where the uh, when we did the first seam there well that's where our drawstring is going to go through so what you're going to be doing is about you're going to go down about half an inch from the top there if you want to do it on the outside by all means you can you can see where you're going you're going to be stitching you have to eyeball it if you wanted to mark it. You can. About half an inch, a little bit more than half an inch. Just at the top of that, I'm going to put my needle down. Needle down on there. I'm going to bring this up. Actually, I don't have to do that. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just start it. Pull that, pull that out so it doesn't make a bird's nest. But that's going to be underneath. I'll trim that seam. Now, I'm going to take a few back stitches here because this is where our drawstring is going to go in that hole. So just eyeballing it. I'm going to be doing this. What we're doing is we're making a channel with this seam here, right there, and then this stitching here. So again, moving it all the while 
in the circle, keeping the same distance apart from the needle to here as best you can. This is the channel, the little casing I should say. This is a bit wider because it's not quite a circle. <laughs> if you manage to get a nice circle, that's great. But again, it won't matter. It won't matter the finished product. Here's again, here's my here's my opening. Now because we have just a, a small cord, um, a, a, just a small cord, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to back stitch that over there. That, um, we don't need a huge, great big opening. And as I was saying in the beginning, if you wanted to make a proper buttonhole, you could, or um, sort of like a, a tiny little grommet, which has a hole, um, you know, by all means, you could do that. I find just the casing on the finished seam is fine. I'll come up here, and there's my beginning. And again, there you go. Now what I am going to do is on this inside stitching, because we stitched that out over here, we stitched it on the inside, I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to where the seam is, I'm just going to do it just a, another stitching. I know my seam won't come out, up, won't come apart, but if it if it did because of the pulling the drawstring, um, I can be assured that it's nice and strong, this seam here. So I'm going to do that on the other side too. And then we can just put the um, we can just put our we can just put our um, drawstring through, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay. Okay. So we have stitched all the way around. We've made our casing. Mine's a little wobbly, but I'm okay with that. Now with this cording. Um, if you use a wider cording, I use, I've cut generously from my, I have a, quite a lot of it, so I've cut about a yard and a half. We might not need that much, but what you're going to do is you're going to find, uh, where's our, where's our seam? We're going to find our opening on our casing here, and we're just going to with a, I have it on a, you can use a bodkin, or, an, um, or you can use a safety pin. I've just pierced my cording on my safety pin, and it just e slots right easily in that opening real real easy I'm going to just pull my um, cording all the way through I've made a nice generous a nice generous size casing now now when you come to this next seam you're just going to go oh, you're going to go right right by it you're just going to go right by it and you're going to come back to the hole that we just came out of okay it's pulling my cording we're going to come right back to that that hole over here on this side. Okay, and then here's our, here's my safety pin right there. Now, I'm just going to leave that, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to leave that there, um, about like that. Let me just see. Oh, I'm in, yeah, I'm in the frame. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, try I cut it a little bit long? I'm just going to knot, yeah, you can cut it maybe about a yard, eh, maybe a yard and a third. I'm just going to knot it right here, just a little, just so I have a little bit, lay, having laid it flat, okay, having laid it flat like that, I'm going to knot that a couple of times. Now, by all means, you could put like, pretty beads on the end of this, um, yeah, that would be lovely. I'll just do that for now. And now I'm going to take my other one. I'm going to do the exact same thing, piercing my cording with my safety pin. And on this side, do the exact same thing, threadle it through this casing. This makes the drawstring effect. I never knew that. And, uh, and years ago, I... I, I I was learning how to make the, a, a drawstring bag because I could never figure it out. I would always sort of put it through the casing and thinking, how does it cinch together? And then years ago, I found out that this is how you make the actual drawstring bag that cinches together when you pull. It's like a miracle. Well, it's not a miracle, but it's like pretty cool, but it's certainly not a miracle. <laughs> um, so anyway, here's, so here's, this, here's this one of coming out the same side, right? Exactly like that. This is over here. 
take my pin off. Yeah, you don't. Have, it's about a yard and a third or so. I'm gonna just cut that, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna um, tie this here. Hopefully, I'm in the frame. Yeah. You have to tie it nice and tight. We are we are pretty much done. Tie that three times. And like I said, you could put tassels on the end of these, um, or you could put beading beads on there. That'd be lovely. Now you turn it around. And here, here's our pockets. Okay, they're all nice and secured. And boy, they're nice. They're they're nice deep pockets. That's the whole point of this. You pull it together. Your casing goes out like that, like this, out. You pull them both the same time, and voila! Look at that. There is a lovely. Look how nice and what a nice, neat, tidy package. There's our circle on the bottom, padded. And there, these are long, but that's okay. That's all right. So that is our lovely little package there. And then when you open it up, when you open it up at your destination, there you go. You see all your lovely little pockets in there. Am I in the frame? Yeah. You see your pockets. They, they come out. And then you can have your, and as you can see, the pockets are quite lovely and deep for your trinkets, for your rings. Um, or if again, if you're if you're using this for um, any, anything, hairpins or hair ties, um, you can open that up like that, and it's a really nice. I like this. It's a little bit bigger um, than the first one I made, and there's our nice, neat little tidy, pretty, pretty little drawstring bag. So I just hope you like this. You just cinch it, cinch it closed, and if you put that in a suitcase, nothing's going to fall out of there. That is all nice. And what a nice, neat, tidy, substantial package. I quite like it because it's it has some body to it. It's not just a hunk of fabric. Um, it has some weight to it with this, the batting down there, and it's padded. Um, and the four layers, this is lined and that's lined. So pretty, though. I hope you love it, folks. Um, yeah, hope you love it. So, hope you make one. They make nice pr little presents, practical little gifts. Super lovely. All right. Thanks. See ya.